Let's get into the functions of these different divisions of the autonomic nervous system. We're going to start with the sympathetic division and what its major job is. Um, this is the division that allows us to respond very quickly to, to really intense situations. A lot of times this is called the fight or flight response that our bodies can exhibit. And the way that this is accomplished is through activation of the sympathetic division of the nervous system. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the neurotransmitters that are used in this system in just a minute, but the overall end result of those neurotransmitters in action is that um, this is going to do things like increase the heart rate, it's going to make more glucose available in the blood um, for, for quick use, and then it's also going to divert a lot of the blood flow from from um, from things like digestion to instead skeletal muscles. So if you're in a, in a fight or flight sort of situation, you don't need to be spending a lot of energy um, digesting food, right? You need to you need to be able to activate your muscles quickly if needed. So the sympathetic division is what allows this to happen. In contrast with that, the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. The parasympathetic division is a lot of times called the rest and digest system. So when this division is active, um, it facilitates things like digestion, it tends to slow the heart rate, so it's facilitating literally resting and digesting. So these uh, two systems, they're both extremely important, but they're both accomplishing different things. And remember um, from the last video that um, these two divisions, in most cases, they innervate the same organs, right? So a lot of the organs that we have in our bodies, they have both nerve stimulation from sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions of the nervous system. And that makes sense. Sometimes we have these organs that need to be revved up and other times they need to be calmed down. So it's important to have um, nerve innervation from neuron innervation from both of these different divisions. The neurotransmitters that are used to accomplish these different tasks, there are two primary types of neurotransmitters used in the autonomic nervous system, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the details of both of them. Acetylcholine, this is one that should be familiar to us at this point. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter that's always used, regardless of which division we're talking about. Um, this is always the neurotransmitter that's used at the first synapse, so um, right, the pre ganglionic to post ganglionic synapse right there. That's always going to be an acetylcholine neurotransmitter that's used regardless of if we're talking about the sympathetic division or the parasympathetic division. If we happen to be in the parasympathetic division, acetylcholine is also the neurotransmitter that tends to be released at the effector organs. So for, in most cases, there are some exceptions, but in most cases for the parasympathetic division, it's always gonna be using acetylcholine, regardless of which, uh, which neuron we are talking about releasing neurotransmitter from. If we are in the sympathetic division, of the um, autonomic nervous system. Again, acetylcholine is going to be the first neurotransmitter that's used. The second neurotransmitter that's used usually is not acetylcholine. Usually it's going to be norepinephrine, which is an example of an adrenergic right, here's the word, adrenergic um, synapses. So we're going to be looking at adrenergic receptors versus cholinergic receptors. Those are going to be the two major types that we will be encountering in the autonomic nervous system. So now, in the context of thinking about different neurotransmitters, now it kind of makes sense how these two different divisions can innervate the same organ, but have different effects, cause different outcomes to result. And this just ties back into the fact that different neurotransmitters can cause different ions to flow across the plasma membrane. So let's take a look here. This is a uh, showing some innervation of smooth muscle tissue. We have innervation by this sympathetic neuron right here, and also innervation by this parasympathetic neuron. So both types of autonomic neurons are 
are present in the same vicinity, we're going to zoom in on this one particular smooth muscle cell and take a look at the two different connections that it might have. Um, so looking at the close-up here, on the top side, this cell has adrenergic receptors, which are perfect for being able to recognize norepinephrine. That's the type of neurotransmitter that tends to be released from the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Okay, but down here on the other side of the cell, we have a different type of receptor. We have cholinergic receptors. These are the receptors that can recognize binding by acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter of choice for the parasympathetic division of the nervous system. So different types of receptor binding leads to different types of ion flow. Um, so depending on which receptor is active, this cell is going to be doing one thing or another. It just depends on which receptor has been activated.